Hello everyone, welcome again. So today's lesson will be on the industrial chemistry option and in particular we'll be looking at the sulfuric acid section and today's lesson will be on the uses of sulfuric acid. Okay, so we'll look at how sulfuric acid influences our industry and what we actually use it for when we um, produce it uh, in the industry. So a typical sulfuric acid production plant um, there's many around the world, and it's probably one of the biggest um, acid production uh, acids produced in industry today. So similar to sodium hydroxide and sodium carbonate, it's a very, very big industrial chemical. So chemically, uh, and in your studies of HSC chemistry, you've already seen a lot of the uses of sulfuric acid. And so this first statement of it's very useful in the chemical industry is something that shouldn't be a surprise to you because you've seen it used in the previous topics. So acids in general are required in a large number of processes, um, different chemical processes for different um, industrial chemicals. Um, and sulfuric acid just happens, obviously, to be one of them. And like I mentioned, sulfuric acid is probably one of the most common industrial acids that's produced along with hydrochloric acid and probably nitric acid. So one of the major uses is to produce fertilizers and while we usually think of nitric acid and ammonia as the fertilizer producing chemicals, sulfuric acid has a place in the fertilizer industry. So what we do is we, we react sulfuric acid with calcium phosphate or what's called rock phosphate which is this chemical here to create another ver to create CaH2PO4 and calcium sulfate. So these are quite complex chemicals and basically to get um, this rock phosphate we mine it. Uh, similar to many other chemicals like sulfur, we mine this particular chemical to produce these two. So this mixture is sold as superphosphate, so this chemical here. And sulfuric acid is used to make sulfate of ammonia which is another common fertilizer. So when we mix sulfuric acid and ammonia, the ammonia absorbs um, some, of the, some of the H plus and you produce um, ammonia of, uh, sulfate of ammonia, which is another common fertilizer. So this is the superphosphate um, equation. You've got the rock phosphate here reacting with the sulfuric acid and then this produces water and then you get the superphosphate and calcium sulfate mixture out. And that's what we put in to our fertilizer. So another very common use of sulfuric acid is some one that you've already seen in production of materials, and it's the manufacture of ethanol, or it can be used to manufacture ethylene, depending on um, the conditions of the reaction. So sulfuric acid can be added to ethene or ethylene to produce ethanol. And in this process, the sulfuric acid is simply just a catalyst and is not used up in the reaction. So this is our reaction. The H2SO4 is our catalyst. And if we, for instance, had a very large supply of ethanol, say we developed a really good fermentation process, we could turn this ethanol into ethylene, and then we'd have a sustainable plastic industry. Or if we have a lot of ethylene, which is likely, because we have lots of petrochemicals, we can make ethanol, which is, so this direction from ethylene to ethanol is the most prevalent one in industry. We see this one happen more frequently than we see this one. So we don't see as much ethanol being turned into ethylene. This one is probably the main use of sulfuric acid as an acid, and that's in lead acid batteries. So this is your car battery. Um, also, if you, for, for instance, live in a rural area and you don't have access to the electricity grid, you would store your electricity with these batteries, uh, usually lead acid batteries, and charge them with, say, solar panels or something. So lead acid batteries are a huge market for sulfuric acid. Okay? So we use the sulfuric acid as an electrolyte in the lead acid cell. So it allows the charges to move from left and right, and it um, does participate a little bit in some of the reactions. So lead and lead oxide are used as the anode and cathode of the cell, respectively. So you've seen this in production of materials um, if you studied the lead acid cell. If you haven't, then um, 
it's not too big a deal. You don't need to understand all of the chemistry, but it's very similar to the dry cell. So we use basically sulfuric acid as an electrolyte. And it's very, very concentrated. This is what makes lead acid cells a little bit dangerous. You've got about a four mole per liter, which is about four molar sulfuric acid sitting in your battery, which is quite dangerous. So just be aware that inside your battery, you could have a very concentrated acid, which is of course quite dangerous. And it's why in the solar industry, uh, this, so in the standalone market, people usually have like a, like a box or a container of sodium bicarbonate in case there's a battery spill somewhere, they can deal with it quickly so it doesn't damage anything. And we also use sulfuric acid to manufacture synthetic fibers. So things like rayon and nylon, those kind of synthetic fibers um, can be produced with the assistance of sulfuric acid. So it can be used in conjunction with other chemicals to process cellulose, so cellulose being the woody part of the, of the biomass, uh, into thread. So we can turn woody biomass into threads, which are obviously can be woven into clothing and things like that. So that chemical that I mentioned, rayon, um, it's sort of an artificial silk, so people like it because it's light um, and it feels nice. Um, so this process of turning cellulose into something else with sulfuric acid produces rayon, um, and it's called artificial silk. Um, another big one, extraction of metal ores, of metals from ore. So many metals are combined with other compounds. Obviously, we know this again from production of materials in year 11 chemistry. So we use acids to dissolve the metals or metal compounds uh, in crushed up pieces of ore. So what happens is when we crush up the ore, say copper, um, we put sulfuric acid onto that crushed up ore and it dissolves the metal, the actual metal that we want. And then for instance, you'll get copper sulfate. Then we take that dissolved solution, we filter out all the, the slag or the other stuff that's remaining. And then we get, we can electrolysize that mixture or that solution and then get the metal that we actually want. Yeah, so the dissolved metal can then be extracted with electrolysis or redox reactions, as I just mentioned. So we just use electro uh, chemical processes and we can actually refine the metal and get that pure metal that we actually want. So for instance, zinc oxides and uranium ores are dissolved in sulfuric acid as part of the refining process. So zinc is a, so zinc oxide is that stuff that you put on your face if you're a cricket player. Um, it's a sunscreen agent and you just dissolve it in sulfuric acid and you can then get the zinc um, out by electrolysis. Um, on the topic of sunscreen, titanium dioxide production. So titanium dioxide is a very, uh, very white powder and what it is is it's essentially, it reflects UV radiation and they use it in sunscreen. Um, so as an alternative to zinc oxide, we would use titanium dioxide. And it's also used in paint and plastics to help stabilize them in UV conditions. So to stop them from breaking down because of the UV. So the titanium dioxide reflects the UV light and keeps the paint and plastic stable. It's also used in food colorings and certain papers and things as well. So it's mostly used as a whitening or, sun, or UV stabilizing agent. So it can be refined from ilmenite or with sulfuric acid. And we've got detergents as well. So later on in this topic, we'll be talking about uh, synthetic detergents um, and non-ionic detergents and things like that. So some dishwashing and laundry detergents contain alkyl, ben alkyl benzene sulf sulfonate groups. So that these are the non-ionic compounds non-ionic detergents, which we'll talk about later. Um, and so we use sulfuric acid to help produce these chemicals. So the sulfuric acid is used to sulfonate the alkyl benzene group and the end of a long hydrocarbon chain. So what that means is that you've got this long carbon chain like this, and you add a benzene group, which is the hexagon, remember? And then there's an SO4, sort of minus, yeah. So that's what the detergent is. And in future lessons, we'll talk about how detergents work. But maybe it's just a primer. You can think about that one for a little while. 
And one of the other major applications is pickling iron and steel. So before iron and steel can be galvanized, uh, so blue scrape steel makes a thing called galvanized steel, you just essentially put zinc over the top of it to protect it. So before it can be galvanized, uh, the existing corrosion needs to be taken off. So if you've got like a piece of metal and it's you know got rust and things on it, you need to remove that layer first, otherwise the galvanizing or the treatment that you're about to do to it won't stick to it. And then you've got an issue of, you know, if it comes off, it, you get no more protection. So what we do is we usually treat the metal with sulfuric acid and essentially just dissolve away the outer layer. And then we've got a nice clean layer on the top um, to put your galvanizing layer on, onto that clean layer. This doesn't work with aluminium. Um, for those who study uh, sorry, shipwrecks, uh, you'll learn why aluminium doesn't like sulfuric acid. Um, so it won't work with some metals, but for iron and steel, it works really well. So the process of taking off this outer layer is called pickling. Um, not exactly sure why it's called pickling, but that's just the name the industry has given it. And lastly, there's some other miscellaneous um, sort of applications for sulfuric acid. So sulfuric acid is used in conjunction with nitric acid to produce lots of other things like explosives, drugs as in pharmaceuticals, dyes, um, colors, colorings and things like that, and pesticides. So there's, these are all miscellaneous ones that sulfuric acid just happens to be part of the process. Whereas the other ones that I've mentioned are more about sulfuric acid is one of the main components of that reaction. Okay. So that wraps up today's lesson on the uses of sulfuric acid. So we've seen a multitude of uses of sulfuric acid from ethanol production to lead acid cells, uh, fabric manufacture, and fertilizer manufacture. So there's the main ones have been given here, and these ones are just some auxiliary ones. So if you can remember maybe three of them, then you're set for the HSC. So any three of those main ones will give you enough sort of ammunition to answer any question on the uses of sulfuric acid. So we move on to the question segment. So question one, which of the following is not an industrial use of sulfuric acid? So we have A, manufacture of fertilizer, and if you've been listening, you should know that that's wrong, because we have sulfuric acid is used to make superphosphate, so we know this, so that can't be the right answer. We know that sulfuric acid can be used to dissolve ores, um, or metals in ores, to produce uh, refined metals later on. So we know that that's not true either. And we've got manufacture of detergent. So we know sulfuric acid is used to sulfonate certain detergents. So that's again not true. So the last one is the production of, sulfuric, of sodium hydroxide. And sulfuric acid is obviously not used in the production of sodium hydroxide. So that's our answer. So which of the following correctly shows how sulfuric acid can be used to produce ethanol from ethene? So if we look at each of these reactions, you can see that, uh, with the exception of D, because it doesn't have a reaction, but A, B, and C, that the sulfuric acid is consumed, and then you get this weird sulfur dioxide and sulfur trioxide. And from what I mentioned in the earlier parts of this lesson, I said that sulfuric acid is just the catalyst. And if we understand what a catalyst is, we'll know that A, B, C are all wrong, because a catalyst can't be consumed in the reaction. So because it catalyzes the process and it's not used up, left-hand side and right-hand side should both include the acid if you're going to put it that way. So the answer is D. Because none of them have the sulfuric acid on both sides, it can't be any of them. So question three. To extract zinc from zinc sulfide, so ZNS, the sulfide is first roasted in oxygen to form zinc oxide and then dissolved in acid. Finally, the solution is electrolysized to retrieve the zinc. So we usually start with zinc sulfide. That's a very typical uh, zinc ore. We roast it, so we heat it in, in the air to form zinc oxide, which is that white powder for sunscreen. And then we dissolve it in sulfuric acid to get the finally the zinc into solution and then electrolyze it to get the pure zinc. So write balanced equations for the first two steps. So the roasting part is the first step. So we've got ZNS, which is the zinc sulfide plus oxygen gas, because it's in the air and the nitrogen doesn't react. And you get zinc oxide, obviously, and 
the sulfur dioxide here. Okay. So if you wanted to do this step by step, you would start with Z and S, because we know that that's part of the reaction. We know we have oxygen, and we know we get Z and O out. And then all you'd have to do is just balance it, and you'd get sulfur dioxide too. And we know all of these reactions, because all of these products, simply because we've studied production of materials as well as acidic environment, and we've seen where all these come from. Okay. Now the second step is the dissolving of the zinc oxide into sulfuric acid. And so we get simply that ZNO with the sulfuric acid gives you Zn2 plus plus O minus. Okay? Now what would probably happen is that the hydrogen ions from here would bond with this and you'd get water. So but this is just the most basic form of the reaction. Okay? So the two hydrogens here would probably combine with this to give you water. Now write the cathode half reaction for the last step. So when we electrolysize this reaction, what happens? And what happens at the cathode? So there's lots of questions here that you need to be able to break down before you can answer this question. So firstly, what happens at the cathode? Well, from that old adage of red cat anox, red cat means reduction happens at the cathode. So this one will reduce, because this probably can't reduce anymore. So this is our reduction. So we know that the zinc is reducing. And then the question is, well, how do we just write that reduction reaction? Well, reduction means that you have to gain electrons, because this number has to go down. So we just add two electrons and get back to pure zinc, because we know that we want pure zinc out. OK? So question four. 78% of the world's H2SO4 is used to manufacture superphosphate and sulfate of ammonia. Okay? So that's a big percentage of the sulfuric acid market. What are these two products used for? So we've talked about this ad nauseum. They're used in the fertilizer industry. So both of them are fertilizers. Write an equation to show the manufacture of sulfate of ammonia, which is ammonium sulfate, essentially, from sulfuric acid and ammonia. So I think I mentioned this, but we'll actually do the question now and uh, sort of elaborate on what I mentioned earlier in this lesson. So essentially you just start with ammonia and sulfuric acid, you bond them together and you get ammonium because remember the ammonia will absorb H plus because it's a weak base so it'll absorb that H plus and become ammonium and then because now it's positively charged so remember that NH4 is positively charged it will want to bond with the negatively charged sulfate ion. Okay? And so you'll need two of them to bond with this. And that gives you your final answer. Okay? Lastly, question five. Ethanol, titanium dioxide, viscous rayon are all different substances, yet sulfuric acid is used to fabricate all of them. Explain how this is possible. Okay? So this is quite a broad question. So sulfuric acid is used in the manufacture of all of these materials, but plays a different role in each of them. Okay? So ethanol, titanium dioxide, and viscous rayon, are, they're all different in the way that sulfuric acid interacts with the reactants to give you the final product. So in the ethanol case, the acid catalyzes the formation of ethanol, as we mentioned. So the ethene plus the water, it just catalyzes that reaction to give you ethanol. We, can we use it to extract the titanium dioxide from the ore as a dis dissolution agent. And it allows rayon to form threads in the sense that it probably dehydrates the cell cellulose, similar to how it works in the ethanol case. So none of the finished products contain sulfur, let alone sulfuric acid. So they all have very different properties. So the sulfuric acid just basically catalyzes all these reactions or in a, in a dissolution case forces the dissolution to happen. Okay. So that wraps up today's lesson on the industrial uses of sulfuric acid. So we've looked at what sulfuric acid is used for, particularly lead acid cells, fabrics, fertilizers, and um, also in the production of ethanol. And a lot of them you should have seen before um, in earlier parts of the course. So hopefully this was a refresher for earlier parts of 
the year, 11, uh, year 12 chemistry course. So in the next few lessons, we'll talk more about how to deal with sulfuric acid. And so I look forward to seeing you at our next lesson. Thank you.